Alright, hey everyone, it's me again, back with another sound design tutorial. This time I'll be talking about uh, the sound I called pain in my, one of my tracks called Barrage. I'll play it first in context for you and then get into how I made it. So here we go, playing in 3, 2, 1. Go. Again, the sound we're going to be talking about is this guy, and then also this guy, because it's basically the same sound. Um, so let me just go ahead and solo it, so you can hear it by itself. Uh, right. Uh, so that's the sound, um, all by itself. And we can jump into this. It's a serum sound. Uh, actually, first thing to notice is that there is a little bit of pitch envelope going on here. Um, I start a little bit below and then come up to 50% which is you know where it should be playing and then come back down sort of wherever I wanted it. Uh, and I also have this macro going up which I'll talk about a little bit more in detail once I get into the patch. So again this is a serum sound and basically what it is is we have this si uh, blah, 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 square, we have this triangle uh, FMing the square, and then we have this comb filter. So that's pretty much what makes this sound. So I'll play it again, and then without the comb filter. Gives it a little bit more, a little bit more grittiness, right? So um, what I did was I brought the cutoff super far down on the comb filter to do that. Um, I don't know, it's like the way it sounded, but basically we have this square and triangle, right? So when you're trying to make a sort of screechy sound, what I usually end up doing is take a square, bring it down two octaves, and then FM it with something, usually a sine wave, but I was feeling adventurous and went for a triangle. So what I did was I brought it up one octave and seven semitones. Uh, so without the FM, it sounds like this. <laughs> Right, so that's what gives it the sort of screechiness. And if I bring the semitones up to 12, so it's just like two octaves, it sounds kind of stupid, right? I really like doing this plus seven semitones thing. You can see this in some of my other videos too, which is something I picked up and I really like. Um, so yeah, anyway, I brought FM from B to pretty much 50%. Uh, these are all wavetables that are in Serum. So we have the square saw weird, or word, I don't know which is in analog and it's here, and then we have MB triangle, which is also in analog and it's here. Uh, so wavetable position starts at far left for both of them. And then you can see that this macro that I was talking about brings this up so it turns into a saw over time. I just thought that would give it some interesting character. Uh, does that macro affect anything else? No, so it's just that. And then we have this LFO which is doing some interesting stuff. There's two LFOs actually. So there's this first LFO which is changing the wavetable position a little tiny bit, not a whole lot, on the square and some more on the triangle. That was just basically from experimentation. I just wanted to get some more uh, um, change on it over time. That's basically what that's doing. If you look at the rate, it's two bar, so it just kind of morphs the sound over time. Uh, and as you can see, that's pretty much all that's on. So this is kind of the cool one. There's this uh, 116T, so triplet, right? This is on the level of the square. So this is what makes it uh, go choppy towards the end. Uh, as you can see, there's a rise of two bars and a delay of one half. So over time, it gets more choppy, which again, as a reminder. So you can kind of hear it at the end. And also I have it change the pan a little bit on the comb just to make it more interesting, I don't know. I just kind of do stuff like that sometimes. So that's actually pretty much it for what's going on in here. Also there's three uh, voices here, but the blend is pretty far left, so I don't know, I just wanted a little bit more stereo. So then we get into the effects, and the big thing going on here is this distortion and the compression, right? So if I turn off the distortion, it sounds like this. <laughs> So 
I don't know, it just makes it louder, more distorted. Uh, same thing for the compressor. Um, just pushes it really hard. It makes the chopping at the end less like choppy and more just like slightly choppy, which I kind of like. Um, the rest of these, it's a hyper. Which adds a bit of stereo width, but not a whole lot. And then flanger phaser chorus, I just kind of put on everything. You could probably do without those, honestly. Um, but why not if they're there, you know? So I'll turn them off, but I can't hear that much of a difference. So yeah, um, that's pretty much that. If you go to the effects, we've got a little bit of saturation, barely any, so basically none. Uh, dimension expander, size turned all the way down. Uh, just give it a little bit more dimension, you know, uh, low cut so the sub has some space, and mono the low end with the maximus, nothing else going on there. And also, uh, if you remember, I talked about this pane number two over here, which sounds like this, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, so what I did there was it's the same patch, it's just duplicated, except the only thing I did, uh, I think, anyway, is drop this modulator, the, the triangle, down an octave. So... As you can hear, you can switch between the two sounds basically like that. Um, I don't know, I just think it's cool to do that so it's not just the same sound played over and over again. Uh, but yeah, this is a pretty simple patch. Uh, that's pretty much it. I uh, hope you liked it. Uh, stay tuned for more. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff if you like it. If you want to see more in the future, uh, take care, guys. See you next time.